Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today I want to talk a little bit about how I'm using Linux in an off-grid van situation. This could apply to any off-grid platform. Maybe you have some crazy off-grid shack in your house that if the power goes off, you have a system that stays online for a while. Or maybe you're just like me and you're traveling around the country to see all the different sites. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at what computers I'm using that are running Linux. A Little bit about how we're running those. We're not going to do a lot of the more advanced, how we're connecting all that to the power. Uh, I'm gonna save that for a different video. We're also gonna talk about how to calculate how much you can use each device on a battery bank setup and a little bit more about how to interface the computers to the battery bank setup. We're gonna do that also in a separate video. This video, I'm just gonna give you a brief tour of which Linux systems we have, how to use them, and such like that. So let's go on over and have a look at the computer systems. All right, so right now I have two computer systems turned on. This is my main streaming PC. This is the only computer that I have that plugs into AC power that's actually attached into the van. Everything else is actually running off of DC power. The second computer that I have is my Arch Endeavor OS computer. This is effectively my media PC. I use it to watch YouTube videos, uh, stream music, or just do any other random multi-purpose items that we need. Now, both monitors I have mounted into the wall on these mount-up uh, monitor screens. And when we're traveling, we actually clip together the tops with these guys here right along the arm, which prevents the arms from moving while traveling. And then I also have monitor covers custom built. They're sitting up here right now. And uh, when we start driving, we take these padded covers, we put them on top of the monitor to protect the monitors from travel. Now, this media PC here has three different computers that will connect into it, and they all use HDMI. So back here, I have an HDMI switcher. This is a well van, uh, like the van part of it, a well van switcher. It's an HDMI 2 3 by one switcher. You can either put one device into three outputs or um, three inputs into one output. That's the way I'm running it and one of these is the media PC. One of those is a Raspberry Pi that is just a Kodi box. And one of these is my main streaming PC when I wanna run that in dual screen mode. As of right now, we're not running that computer in dual screen mode, but if I just come back here and toggle the button twice, it's going to drop over into dual screen monitor mode. But usually, unless I'm actually streaming, I keep it in the single stream. Um, mode and then keep this guy over here. Now back here is where I have my um, media and work computer stuff. So this is the Raspi Raspberry Pi 4, 8 gigabytes of RAM. This is actually what I use for the majority of my work. And uh, that guy there is running Manjaro. This one here is a Raspberry Pi 2 that is running Kodi. Um, it is running Kodi on Open Source Media Center, and it runs very well, and this is the box that used to be attached to my television. Now, both these guys are actually attached to these, um, to these little clips, and they're Velcroed in, so I can pull these guys off if I have to, if I need to maintenance them, or even swap out the boards if they happen to go bad. So we can do that. And then these two toggle switches will toggle them on. This is the Manjaro work computer. This is the um, Raspberry Pi for mo watching movies. This one's actually the monitors. I also have up here, I have a four-way audio switcher. This is to choose which input is coming out of the built-in speakers that are built into the wall. There's one there, one down there. There's another down there and another up there. So the four speakers built in running on this Kinter um, MI170 Plus two-channel hi-fi stereo amplifier. That guy there is just tied directly into the power. I just used the toggle button. I probably should have put a switch on it, but oh well, you live and learn. This guy here feeds into that to allow me to choose the media PC, the streaming PC. This is just this random guy here, which could be a little MP3 player, any other phone, or any other device that I want to push power to. Or this guy is the Raspberry Pi for watching movies. 
So that is how I have my setup over there. Then the next thing we're gonna have a look at is inside the big cabinet over here. So this cabinet here, and let me turn on some extra lights. Uh, this cabinet over here runs, uh, this is my power supply. You can see that my um, uh, inverter power, this is my inverter power for my AC power, and it's mostly full. It's rarely ever at the green bar on. Right now we're running at 13.2 um, volts, which is effectively full battery. Right now the solar panels are drawing 35 volts at 0.8 amps because it's late in the day. We're not gonna be drawing a lot more power today. These five switches control the computer systems. The computer systems are in here. All right, so this shelf here, this actually contains the networking stuff. So the guy you see up front, the black one there, that is a Sierra Wireless LX40. Um, that is a cellular modem that is pulling in data from a Verizon SIM card. Right next to it is the PFSense router. Behind that is a Raspberry Pi 4 web server. You probably can't see it back there because we're getting tight. Right back behind the modem is an eight port gigabit network switch. And then very, very back is a Raspberry Pi NAS. So that is the Open Media Vault NAS that is also now running a, um, an ebook server. Now those guys there are all powered independently on these switches because sometimes I need to run some of them. So like right now, this is the NAS. I don't need the NAS right now, so that's powered off. This is the web server that I use for building a client sites off grid. This one is the internet for the modem. This one is the router and this one is the network switch. All of these guys are wired in with a series of buck converters and things like that. So let me grab my thing here. You can see up top, you can see that buck converter up front. So these are also called step up or step down converters. And I have a bunch of them back here for a variety of different devices. Now two of the devices run off of 12 volt power, which is what my battery system is. So I don't need to run those on any converters. They just tie right into the battery, fused of course. The other thought spot that we have is the main PC. Now the main PC in here, uh, this guy is plugged into the AC power. And what I have here is, you can see the processor up front, it's tied right on in. I have them up on these blocks here, which is to give height. And then you can see this pegboard down there on the bottom. This is actually suspended in a padded grid, which will greatly reduce vibration. So this guy here is how the whole system is tied in. You can see the power supply, that little blue light back there. And then we also have a ventilation fan on the side over here. Uh, so that guy there has, has its own LEDs as well. So that way I have all of the access to the full-size PC right here. And then I can access on the front panel down here. Uh, you have a hard time seeing it because it's, it's black down here. But uh, this guy here, we have my power switch over here. I have my ports here. Here's my whole uh, volume switch. I have my USB ports here. I have my sound card or uh, my video card over here. And then I have my IC dock and I have a CD-ROM up here. So I have all of the different components I need right there all in one spot. So that guy there is the only one that runs on AC power and that guy will run when this inverter is on. So there we have it. There is all of the computer systems that we have built into the wall. Now that's not including, obviously, I have a few laptops floating around here. I'll take those into coffee shops. Some of them have specific purposes, like I have a Mac and a Surface here to test um, Apple and um, Windows compatibility on projects that we're working on that we can access. We also have an ethernet port. I didn't directly show it, but there's an ethernet port back down here where I can plug any device into the ethernet as well. So uh, that is the other factor that we have. And then there's a bunch of other little odds and ends in here as well. So let me know the things you wanna see up close. And in a future video, we're gonna talk a little bit more about how I wired everything into the power supplies and how to calculate the 
the amount of time you can have computers on with your individual battery banks and we'll also talk a little bit about the efficiency of running solar panels to keep things charged up while you are on the road so there's a brief tour of the van have a look over at the van channel which is at youtube.com slash tux traveler you can find that over there if you want to see more van life type videos that are not specific to the specific to the linux or the tech stuff inside of the van so have a look over there thanks for watching everybody and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.